host and resident career expert, Todd Burma. We are coming to you from beautiful downtown Conroe, Texas on Lone Star Community Radio FM 104.5 and 106.1 IRLoneStar.com. Each week on this program, we'll be discussing key topics to empower you to succeed with the job search and your career. In addition, we'll share with you the latest career-related news and jobs data you can use to land a new job and make more money. Our goal with your career is to share with you insider secrets and tips you can use, whether you're looking for a new job or just want to make more on your existing one. On today's program, we're going to discuss tips on follow-up, negotiating, and starting right on your new job. But before diving in, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Todd Bermont, author of 10 Insider Secrets to Winning Job Search, and also founder of TCC Learning of League City, Texas. My company, TCC Learning, has created an online program to empower you to land your dream job. To learn more, visit tcclearning.com. That's tcclearning.com. And use the coupon code your career in all caps. That's your career in all caps. And you'll automatically receive a 20% discount off of any of our programs. We've got lots to discuss today. First, today is Veterans Day. I want to wish all the veterans in our audience a happy Veterans Day. Yesterday, I attended the Red, White, and You event in Houston. And I'd like to give a positive shout out to Workforce Solutions for just doing an incredible job. There were over 150 employers hiring that, that were hiring veterans yesterday, over 150 employers. And I believe almost 4,000 veterans attended the event. I'd like to thank each and every veteran for your service to our nation. Your sacrifices and dedication are what keeps us free and able to live our lives to the fullest. Thank you for your service. Now for the elephant in the room, the election. People are wondering, what impact will this election have on jobs and the economy? While I do not have a crystal ball, I can share with you a couple of thoughts. First of all, employers typically do not like uncertainty. For the last several months, job creation has been a bit stagnant due to the uncertainty surrounding the election. Now that the election is over, employers can plan accordingly. As such, I expect May to begin hiring again. Between the holiday season coming up on us, which is always a great hiring season, and the election being over, look for an increase in job opportunities. And regardless of the side of the political fence that you're on, Job seekers, you should spiff up your resumes and double down on your job search efforts. Many job seekers have been sidetracked for the last several months, just like employers have. Those job seekers that rev up the jets and dive into the job search full speed, you're going to be the ones that succeed. We live in the best country on earth. There's a lot to be proud of for our nation. So regardless of what side of the political fence you're on, it's a great time to get back to work. So dive into that job search with vigor and excitement. Now let's look at the weekly unemployment numbers. In yesterday's report from the Department of Labor, there were 257,000 people that filed first-time unemployment claims. While 257,000 is still a large number, this is really a great number, though, from the sense that it's 40,000 less claims than this same time last year. Considering all the events surrounding this year's election, that number is truly amazing. What that means is for those of you looking to land a new job, you're going to have a lot less competition today than you might have a year ago at this time. In addition, surprisingly, we are in the midst of the longest streak since 1970 of 88 consecutive weeks of jobless claims being below 300,000 people in a week. So this is really good news for job seekers. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the program, get your resume in order. Start practicing for interviews. Get out there and network. Meet new people. And be on your way to landing a great job. Next, let's look at the monthly job creation numbers. Non-farm payroll increased by 161,000 jobs in the most recent month. The reported unemployment rate was 4.9%. Perhaps the best news of that report was that wages 
went up 10 cents an hour. Now, while that might seem to be an insignificant number, from a percentage standpoint, it's actually one of the larger wage increases we've seen in a while. So that often is a leading indicator as well to the what the job market's going to look like moving forward. So again, there's a lot of reason for optimism moving forward. The top job growth sectors in the most recent month were healthcare-related jobs. 31,000 of those were added in the past month. Business and professional services jobs. 43,000 of those were added in the last month. And then financial services jobs. 14,000 of those jobs have been added in the last month as well. So overall, considering that there was a recent hurricane and an election, the latest monthly jobs report is not bad. The good news is that there are jobs still being created. It's time to get pumped up, excited, and dive into your job search. So we're about to go to a break, but when we come back, I'm going to cover some topics that people often don't think of when it comes to the job search. These are follow-up, negotiation, and starting right on the job. So with that, you are currently listening to Your Career with Todd Bermont on Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1, and IRLoneStar.com. Stay tuned for more. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we're looking for more talk shows and volunteer DJs for our music shows. If you're interested in having your own talk show on Lone Star, or always wanted to live out your dream of being a music DJ, contact Lone Star Community Radio online at irlonestar.com slash contact us, or call the station at 936-647-5747 for more information. Welcome back to Your Career. I'm your host and resident career expert, Todd Berman. Each week on Your Career, we'll be sharing valuable information you can use to further your career and land the ideal job. Now let's dive in on today's first topic, following up. All right, let's say you just had an awesome job interview and you like your chances of moving forward in the hiring process. Just everything on the interview went really, really well and you're Totally pumped. Now you can take a step back, relax, and wait for the phone to ring, right? Well, not exactly. There is one key piece of the equation, and that is proper follow-up after the interview. When I talk to recruiters, one of their biggest pet peeves is lack of follow-up. How many of you send a thank you email after your interviews? When I interviewed candidates for regional sales positions, About three in every 10 that I interviewed took the time to send me a thank you email. I can tell you one thing for sure. At the other seven out of 10 that did not send me a thank you email, they never got a second interview. So what have you been doing when it comes to your follow-up? Have you been saying thank you? After all, what has happened to people's manners? I don't know about you, but when I was brought up, I was brought up to be polite and to always say thank you when people do something nice for you. When you go on an interview, people are giving you the courtesy of their time and consideration. So try your best to get a business card from each person you meet so you can have their contact information readily available to properly follow up after the interview. However, before you can follow up, it's important to capture your thoughts from the interview. The first post-interview activity to do is to reflect on the interview that you just completed. Immediately after your interviews, try to find a local coffee shop or some other place where you can take out your laptop, tablet, or even a notepad and a pen to gather your thoughts from the interview. If you just finished a phone interview, then capture your thoughts as soon as you hang up the phone. There are many reasons why you should collect your thoughts right after the interview. Number one, to summarize what was discussed. That way, you can capture your thoughts while they're live in your head and fresh. Secondly, to review the opportunity to determine if it's something that you really want to pursue further. Because remember, on your job interviews, they have to sell you on the position as much as you have to sell yourself on why you should be hired. 
it's not necessary to put folks on a pedestal. Put yourself on an equal playing field. Did they adequately sell you on the position? Is it something that you're really excited about? Number three, outline any questions or concerns you might have. You know, this is very important because invariably after the interview, you're going to come up with a few questions that you'd be like, ah, I wish I, I wish I had asked that during the interview. So make sure you capture those questions that you wish you would have asked during the interview so that way in follow-up interviews you can cover those questions. The fourth key reason to capture your thoughts right after the interview are to identify any key selling points you wish you had discussed in the interview but that you didn't have a chance or an opportunity to cover. And likely in your preparation for the interviews, you outlined several key reasons on why an employer may want to hire you. You may have outlined some great stories to share about quantifiable results from your career. But yet, sometimes the interviews don't always go to script, according to script. And you might have neglected or, or not had the opportunity to cover something very important. Make sure you take note of that, so that way you may want to bring it up in your thank you email, or you may want to bring it up in subsequent interviews. The fifth reason that you should collect your thoughts right after the interview is to rate your performance on the, on the interview itself and identify areas of improvement. None of us are perfect. There's always going to be areas where we did well on the interview and areas where we can improve. So the best time to look back at the interview and to capture the essence of how you performed on that interview and what was discussed is right after you finish it. That is when the information is going to be the freshest in your mind. Yes, it's going to be tempting to check voicemails and emails after your interview or to go on Facebook. But hold off doing so. Keep your head as clear as possible so you can effectively summarize the interview. Now, let's move on to the next aspect of the interview. So with the follow up what you know what what should you you know what information should you capture in that follow up to make sure that you properly sell yourself for the position Well items to capture from the interview to take down on your notes capture what business challenges were identified during the interview what were the responsibilities outlined What's the decision-making criteria of how they're going to select the ideal candidate? What are the key wants and desires? What are the possible concerns? What are some of the hot buttons that really got the interviewer excited? You know, that you could tell that the interviewer's face just lit up when you mentioned certain hot buttons. And what are the next steps in the hiring process? These are all notes that you should capture while you're, while you're summarizing how that interview went. Now, one of the benefits of capturing your thoughts as quickly as possible is that the information you garner will serve as a wonderful foundation for building your closing arguments on why you should be hired. Another benefit in listing points of interest of which you can refer to in, in further discussions, you know, think, think about it. You know, you can summarize in your thank you email, remind them of the two or three key points on why you should be hired. Because again, people are going to forget a lot after the interview, both on both sides of the equation. So unless they captured their thoughts too, they might not quite remember everything you'd said in the interview. So it's good to repeat in your thank you emails some of those thoughts. So also, when, when reviewing the interview that you just completed, it's important to ask yourself certain questions. Am I interested in this job? Would I like to be working for this boss? Is this the job that I thought it was? Would I like working there? How is the morale? 
Is there a winning attitude? Is the compensation right? Are the goals realistic for this position? How did I feel when I was going through the interview? And were prospective coworkers motivated or did they look down? These are all questions that you should ask yourself when reviewing the interview that you just completed. Once you've captured your notes and thoughts from the interview, it's time to send a thank you email. Proper follow-up is one of the most important things a job seeker can do after the interview. However, amazingly, so many candidates fail to do this most basic step. Quite often, an interviewer can be torn between two candidates. One candidate may have a better work experience, while the other may be more personable. Sometimes it can be very difficult for an interviewer to choose between two top candidates. I know I've been in that boat a few times. When an interviewer is torn on which candidate to choose, often the deciding factor is the quality and caliber of the candidate's follow-up after the interview. So when you follow up after the interview, it can be as simple as sending a thank you email or as extensive as a formal sending a formal business plan or a 90-day plan. The method of follow-up you choose will be dictated by the circumstances you encounter and the job you're seeking. If you're interviewing for a CEO position, the board may ask you for a formal business plan. However, if you just completed a corporate visit for a regional sales manager position or an accounting position or a marketing position uh, or a, a nursing position or something like that, then sending a uh, thank you email is certainly appropriate. So we're going to cover a few more tips on follow-up, but I want you to really digest the importance of capturing the information during the interview. So digest that as we go to break. And when we come back, we're going to finish up on follow-up and then we're going to talk about negotiation as well. So you are currently listening to Your Career with Todd Bermont on Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Stay tuned as we'll be discussing more. Want to check out what it's like to be on the radio? Need credit for school? For an internship? Then contact Dick online at dick at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we are here to be part of the community. Welcome back to Your Career. I'm your host and resident career expert, Todd Berman. Each week on Your Career, we will be sharing valuable information you can use to further your career and land the ideal job. And again, with Today being Veterans Day, I want to give a shout out to all the veterans in the audience. Thank you so much for your incredible service to our nation. Uh, Don't know what we would do without you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for your service. It's very much appreciated. So before the break, we were talking about the importance of capturing your notes after the interview. And we were also touching on the importance of sending a thank you note after the interview as well, showing proper gratitude for the interview. So many people miss this most basic of steps. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I'd like to share a story with you. Uh, Years ago when I worked for American Power Conversion, I was looking to hire a candidate to head up our West Coast efforts on OEM accounts like HP and son. And I was really torn between two candidates. One was from the Bay Area and one was from the Los Angeles area. Both candidates, they really wowed me on the interview. And I was really struggling. In fact, I liked both candidates so much, I tried to convince the company to let me hire both of them. But I I couldn't get that second hiring ticket approved, so I could only hire one of the candidates. And it was really interesting because uh, one of the candidates, as soon as she got off the airplane when she landed in California, at the the time, American Power Conversion was was headquartered in West Kingston, Rhode Island. And um, so uh, 
after she landed back in the Bay Area, from the airport, she got online and sent me a thank you email, letting me know that she had just landed, how much she really enjoyed the interview and why she thought she was the best person for the job. I was really impressed that here from the airport, she took the time to send me a thank you email. Now, the other candidate that I liked so much, he took a couple days to follow up to say thank you. So guess who I hired? I hired the one that took that extra step of sending the thank you from the airport. Now, this was several years ago before Wi-Fi and before smartphones and, and everything else. Nowadays, if you want to really differentiate yourself, you know, an ideal way to send a thank you would be after you capture your notes at Starbucks or some other coffee shop, local coffee shop. Uh, get on the Wi-Fi if you have a laptop or tablet or even your smartphone and send a thank you email within a couple hours of the interview. You'd be amazed at how much that buys you. So let's look at some tips for follow-up. First of all, send a thank you to everyone you meet, even the receptionists. You just never know who can make or break your candidacy. Second, try to send a thank you email within the same business day, ideally within a few hours. It'll show that you care and that you're interested in the position, just like I said earlier. Third, remind hiring managers why you are the best candidate. And the final tip I'd like to share with you for thank you emails is be sure to reclose them on the next steps in the process. Mention your enthusiasm. Show how much you really want the job. Remind them of the great synergies you bring to the opportunity. And close them on the fact that you are looking forward to the next step in the process. When you do these things, when you're preparing for your interviews, you're going to find that you're going to separate yourself from the pack. You know, it's interesting. I was, I was talking to a recruiter the other day from a, uh, a major leasing company. And, she, you know, it was kind of a crazy number, but she said, you know, we, we somehow got on the topic of follow-up. And she said, Todd, don't get me on my soapbox on this. I said, how come? She said, Todd, I, I just got back from doing recruiting on several Midwest college campuses. And I interviewed 62 students that are going to be graduating. And she said, how many, she asked me a question. She, she asked, how many of those 62 students do you think bothered to send me a thank you email after the interview? And you know, I was thinking, hmm. You know, I'd like to think it was at least the same odds of that I got of three out of every ten. But I'm like, well, maybe it's not quite that good of odds. So maybe it's two out of every ten. So she interviewed sixty people. So I, I said, well, I would guess at least twelve to thirteen people sent you a thank you email. She said, Todd, not even close. Only two out of 62 students sent her a thank you email. Imagine that. So those of you that are currently in college, you're looking for an internship, you're looking for a job after school, take that extra step. Show the proper gratitude after your interviews. Just by sending a thank you email, you are going to separate yourself from the pack. Wow, so much to say in so little time. It's already time to go to break. When we come back, we'll be discussing another topic that's really important in the job search process, and that's negotiating job offers. So with that, you are currently listening to Your Career with Todd Bermont on Lone Star Community Radio worldwide on IRLoneStar.com, FM 104.5 and 106.1. Stay tuned as we're going to be discussing more exciting information about how you can make more money.
Lone Star Community Radio is FM. That's right. Set your radio dials and your button presets to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1, coming in June of 2016. To celebrate this edition and the addition of video versions of our talk and music shows on YouTube, cable TV, and Our City TV, we are offering special sponsorship rates, which include free audio spots that are played throughout our broadcast. Interested? Check out our sponsor rates for shows just like the one you're listening to online at IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor or call the station at 936-647-5747. Reaching the people of Montgomery County with Montgomery County's community radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Welcome back to your career. I'm your resident host and career expert Todd Bermont. Each week on Your Career, we'll be sharing valuable information you can use to further your career and land the ideal job. You know, one thing I don't talk about enough is the fact that there there are several ways that you can reach out to me. If you have questions about the job search process that you would like covered on the air, we have a Facebook page for Your Career, and we also have a uh, uh, Twitter as well. And a YouTube page where you can listen to previous podcasts from the program uh, and, and SoundCloud too. We are uh, across the board, but really, you know, we'd like to get feedback from you. How do you like the show? What would you like to learn more of uh, in following episodes of this program? So feel free to, free to reach out to me on Facebook. Best way to find the Facebook page is to visit the show page here at IRLoneStar.com. Just go to the Your Career page. There will be links to all of our show pages. And feel free to reach out at any time to ask questions, and I will do my best to address them on the program. Now I'd like to dive into a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is negotiation. Yeah, I'd like to share with you a story that's, to this day, it's still one of my biggest regrets in my life. And, uh, you know, I'm going to date myself a little bit. I graduated back in 1986 from the University of Illinois. And my senior year of college, I had six job offers. And they ranged from an offer with NCR to where it was like $18,000 on the low end and uh, and an offer with U.S. Steel, which was about $6,000 more a year, you know, so now I'm going to really date myself with some of these numbers, but, uh, you know, I had worked summer jobs while I was in college because one of my dreams was after I graduated college, I wanted to go and travel throughout Europe. You know, I just, you know, I'd, I took French in junior high and high school and always had been intrigued with Europe, and I wanted to go to France, I wanted to go to the UK, I wanted to go to Ireland, and um, unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to do that. Why? Because I got six job offers, as I mentioned, and I, I never knew that you could negotiate anything in these job offers. I just assumed that Everything was just, uh, you know, it's on paper and it is what it is. And when I graduated college, now I'm going to really date myself because back then a fast computer was screaming at six megahertz. That was that was a fast computer. And, and our great storage consisted of floppy disks on computers. So, so I'm going to date myself here. But you know, I had always wanted to go into the computer industry. My dad uh, worked for IBM for many years, and and it just seemed like such an exciting industry. And of the six job offers, the one with NCR was the only one that I got where it was revolving around the selling of computers. And I had to move to St. Louis from the Chicago area to take this job. And, um, you know, so first of all, I never knew, you know, that job was the lowest offer by like $6,000, which was like a 30% 
difference. And I never knew at that time that you can negotiate salary. I never, it never dawned on me to come back to him and say, you know, I really love the opportunity, but I have another, I've got several other offers that are offering me significantly more money. Is there any way we can meet in the mill? You know, I never thought to ask that question, never knew to ask that question. And the start date was the key thing. The start date was like the first or second week of June. So there was no chance for me to go to Europe. My vacation wound up being going to Winnipeg for three days, visiting a couple of ladies that I had met on a uh, Christmas vacation a year or two earlier. And, um, and then I visited my cousin in Minneapolis uh, on the way back. So rather than having a couple of month vacation throughout Europe, I had a six day vacation to Winnipeg and Minneapolis. <laughs> not that those are bad cities, but not quite Europe. And to this day, I, I I still regret the fact that I never had the opportunity to take that trip. And it was interesting when I joined NCR, I became really good friends with a gentleman who I'm still great friends with today, Andy. And Andy started with NCR the year before I did, and he graduated from uh, Mizzou, big rival of the University of Illinois. And... um but interestingly, he started in September. And finally, about six months into the job, I got up the nerve to ask Andy, how was it that you were so lucky to be able to start the job in September when I had to start in June? You know what answer he gave me? Take a guess. What answer did he give me? The answer he gave me was, I just asked. I'm like, you're kidding me, right? And he said, no. And to this day, I look back at that and I'm like, I lost out on that opportunity of a lifetime to travel throughout Europe with no, not a worry and not a care in the world. And all I had to have done was ask if I could have started a couple months later. But the folks at the great University of Illinois, they never taught us that. And um, to this day, it's still, uh, still one of my biggest regrets. So those of you in this audience that are listening to this program, if there's something about the offer that you don't like and it's really going to bother you, Negotiate it. Try to take a stand. So I'm going to, after the break, we're, we're going to take a brief break. And, and after the break, we're going to come back. And I'm going to share with you some best practices when it comes to negotiating and, and some ways that, that you can approach it. So you are listening to IRLoneStar.com. You can listen to us worldwide, even live on the Internet, by just going to the show page. So stay tuned and we'll be back right after these important messages. I know you know this already, but most of the shows on Lone Star Community Radio are available in podcast format. If you want to keep up with the latest shows, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, Lone Star Community Radio, and our website at IRLoneStar.com. You can even follow us on SoundCloud and Twitter to see the latest posts from Lone Star Community Radio. Can't find a show? Then just search for it on IRLoneStar.com in the search bar to the top right of every page. Or just contact us on IRLoneStar.com slash contact us with your questions, demands, sponsorships, anything. Lone Star Community Radio is your Montgomery County Community Radio Station. Welcome back to Your Career. I'm your host and resident career expert, Todd Burma. Each week on Your Career, we'll be sharing valuable information you can use to further your career and land the ideal job. 
Again, if you got questions about the job search process, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook. Visit our show page. You can even send me an email question. Just check out the Your Career show page on IRLoneStar.com. So before the break, I was sharing with you a story of when I graduated college with six job offers, and we talked about the importance of negotiation. And uh, let's look at some important factors when it comes to negotiating job offers. The first step to any successful negotiation is to know what you're worth and how much money you want to make. Unless you know what you want, how are you supposed to get it? However, it's important to be realistic with what the market will bear. Years ago, there was a movie called Trading Places. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, In that movie, Dan Aykroyd plays the role of a rich person who winds up totally poor and destitute due to a bet made by his employer. And uh, in that movie, there's a classic scene where Dan Aykroyd goes to a pawn shop to sell his $5,000 watch to get some much-needed cash. And the owner of the pawn shop, he looks at the watch and says, I'll give you $50 for that watch. And Dan Aykroyd, he's just incredulous. He asks the owner, do you have any idea what this watch is worth? And he proceeds to tell him that he spent $5,000 on the watch. Well, the owner goes on to tell him that, you know what? I don't care what you spent on that watch because in Philadelphia, it's worth 50 bucks. And uh, so, so what that story illustrates is that there's a balance between what you feel you're worth and what the current market will bear. Now, certainly you're going to be worth a lot more than 50 bucks, but in bad economies, employers can often get away with offering a lot less. Does that mean you must accept the first offer you get from a prospective employer? No. However, you do need to be realistic in the value of your services. When finding the right job, compensation is certainly important. However, so too are other aspects of the job that relate to your overall quality of life. Certainly one of the first tasks is to write down your salary and total compensation objectives. After all, if you don't have a target to aim for, how are you going to hit it? Decide what you want. Aim high with your goals. Don't settle for less than what you deserve and what the market will bear. There are several things to consider when it comes to overall job satisfaction. Uh, you, first of all, you never want to accept a job for less than what it'll take for you to live comfortably. If your expenses are $7,000 a month, that means you're spending $84,000 per year in after-tax money. $84,000 a year in after-tax money translates into needing a salary of anywhere from $112,000 to $140,000 per year, depending on the tax rates in your state. If a company offers you $100,000, how are you going to make up the other $12,000 of income that you need? You must either move, cut back on your living expenses, or get a second job. Are any of those options acceptable to you? If not, then don't accept a job for less than what it'll take for you to live the lifestyle that you want. And if the jobs you are seeking are not going to allow you to live the lifestyle that you want, you really need to think long and hard about, do I want to stay in this career? Or do I want to make a life change? When negotiating, the the best, you know, when negotiating an offer, you know, there's certain guidelines that I'd like you to follow when it comes to win-win negotiations. First of all, understand that each job negotiation is different. What may be negotiable in one organization is not necessarily negotiable in another. Be judicious in your expectations. Number two, maintain flexibility throughout the process. Be strong in your expectations, but balance those with how much you really want the job. Number three, the higher the impact of the position, the more you can negotiate. So if you're interviewing for a C-level position that impacts the entire organization, you'll have more negotiating power than if you're interviewing for an entry-level role. Next, the the level of bureaucracy will often equate to the ability to negotiate as well. If an organization is very rigid and bureaucratic, there may be less room for deviation negotiations than if a company is smaller and nimbler. Never accept an offer on the spot. 
No matter how much you want to accept the offer, show your excitement, and just tell the recruiter that you want to take 8 to 24 hours to quickly review the offer and make sure everything's in order. Now, one thing I want to mention to the audience is don't ever inflate your past earnings. One thing you never want to do is lie about what you've made before. Companies will often do a credit check prior to formalizing an offer, and they can very easily tell if you're not being truthful during your negotiations. Lying about your qualifications on your resume or lying about your income is the quickest way to losing a job offer. Don't do it. You can be purposely vague, but do not lie about what you have earned. Evaluate the opportunity first. Before negotiating, determine if you want the job and ask yourself some important questions. Remove your emotions. Keep it impersonal. Stay positive and upbeat about the opportunity. Show your flexibility. Use phrases such as, I'm open to this depending on, or using a phrase such as, I'm open, demonstrates that you're not totally rigid in your demands. It shows that you have some flexibility. And know that it's okay to walk away too. Sometimes you may not be able to negotiate a level of compensation that you require. When that happens, it's okay to reject the final offer. You don't have to accept the offer just because you need a job. See, the the, the point that I want to make here is it's very important that the that you are absolutely delighted with the offer. Because if you're not happy with the job offer, you're never going to be happy on the job. It's always going to weigh on you in the back of your mind. And it's going to be a lot more difficult to negotiate for more money after you start the job than during the hiring process. So it's so important to strive for getting the offer that you want. So we're going to go to break here. And we've got a few more items I'd like to talk about in negotiation. So... You are listening to us worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. FM 104.5, 106.1. We are coming to you from lovely downtown Conroe, Texas. Stay tuned for more great information. Want to check out what it's like to be on the radio? Need credit for school? For an internship? Then contact Dick online at dick at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we are here to be part of the community. Welcome back to Your Career with Todd Vermont. I'm your host and resident career expert, and uh, just really excited to have uh, this program today. Um, to be able to broadcast to you on Veterans Day, it is, it's really a true honor. You know, when, when you think about it, our veterans do so much for us and, and sacrifice so much for our nation to be as great as it is. So veterans in the audience, once again, thank you for your service. Now, before the break, we were talking about negotiation, and I'd like to continue on that thought. At the end of the day, a lot of job offers are negotiable, but that doesn't necessarily mean you want to negotiate every offer. So I have a a really good rule of thumb that I'd like to share with you when it comes to negotiation. If, If you get a job offer and you're absolutely delighted with that offer, they're giving you the money you're looking for, the vacation time you're looking for, and everything else, then accept the offer. Be thrilled about it. Because if you're delighted with the offer, you know, it's, it's awesome. And you're going to be happy on the job. Um, the rule of thumb I say is that if you're, if you're not going to be happy with the offer, if you're not going to be happy with the income that you're making, then it's time to negotiate prior to starting the job. Because at the end of the day, compensation is so important, but other things are, are important as well. But if day one you feel like you you sold yourself short for the position and you took it just because the economy wasn't quite so great or because it was the only offer you had, you're likely not going to be happy on the job. So there's several questions that you should ask yourself 
when it comes to, you know, whether or not you should enter in any negotiation. Is this a position I really want? Is the company offering enough money? How hard will it be to succeed on this job? How hard will I have to work on this job? Is this a short or a long-term position? How will I fit in with the corporate culture? In the future, am I likely to still want to work there? Do I want to work for this boss? Is the position in alignment with my mission and values? That's so important because I can tell you, if, if a company or a boss is not in alignment with your, with your values and your principles, you're going to be miserable on a job. So that, that's one of the most important questions you can ever ask yourself. Other questions to ask are, will I enjoy the job and working at the company? Does the position and opportunity feel right? Am I excited about it? Is the job in alignment with my long-term career goals and objectives? Will this job allow me to have the right balance that I want to have in my life? Is this my ideal job? Is this a new position or am I replacing somebody? If I am replacing somebody, are the expectations realistic? I can tell you uh, several years ago, back in uh, 2009, I I took a job because the economy was really bad and and the expectations uh, were just ridiculous. They they expected me to sell twice as much as the previous two people combined had sold. So this this position was combining the responsibility of two people into one position, and the quota that they assigned was more than double at the height of the Great Recession of what the two people combined sold the previous year. I had no chance of success in that position. And guess what? I, I was miserable on that job, and I only lasted about a year on, on that job. So you really want to ask yourself, are the expectations realistic? And, um, you know, if you are replacing somebody, why did that person leave or did they get fired? You know, and what makes you feel like you can do better in that role? You know, other questions to ask yourself to determine if you should negotiate or not is, is there a problem I should be aware of on this new job? Do I have the skills to succeed in this job? Do I really want to work for this company? Are my skills and expertise in alignment with the expectations for the position? Is this an employer in position where I can be proud to be at? Can I achieve, again, the work-life balance I really want in this job? And finally, an important question to ask that people often are afraid to ask, will I enjoy the job and have fun with it? It's so important to have fun on the job. Life is too short. And, you know, you'll know when the offer is right. Only you can know how much you really want to work for a given employer. There's no right or wrong answer. It's only what feels right to you. Often it's a gut feel, and that's okay. Our gut is usually right. If your gut tells you that you can negotiate for a lot more, then do it. If not, then don't. So there's so much more that we could talk about on negotiation. Uh, I could rattle on for hours and hours, but but we're going to have to wrap it up today. I suggest you go to tcclearning.com where we teach you some scripts and steps that you can do to negotiate the best possible offers. Once again, on Veterans Day, thank you for your service, veterans. It's very much appreciated by this radio host. So that brings us to the end of our program. Next week, tune in because we're going to have another great show. We're going to have an accountant on the program. And if nothing else, I want you to tune in just to see how I can make having an accountant on the program exciting for our listeners. So with that, have an incredible weekend. Thank you for tuning in to Your Career with Todd Bermont and Worldwide on IRLoneStar.com, FM 104.5, 106.1. Have a great day, and thank you for listening. Thanks for checking out this production on Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, 
Check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Yeah, contact Dick Schistler at dick at irlonestar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.